In our evening time, we've got one thought that we want to drive, one resonant notion to encourage the people of God to never stop praying. Don't stop praying. In a season where we've got so much going on, so much pain by way of our pandemic, so much pain by way of political uh, uh, matters, and, and especially right now, the sinister move of racism being not only seen and felt and hurt, but our response to that, in injustices being brought to light and seen like never before, all injustices demand, they deserve some form of demonstration, some form of response. And we're challenging the notion, we're simply saying that this move is a move that ought to be responded to out of prayer. It ought to be responded to by the power of God. In fact, when you and I look at the notion of how God has responded over the course of human history, when God saw the brokenness and the and the dis-ease and the ugliness of our world, his response was in the person of Jesus. His response was the manifestation of love. His response was sending the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords to sacrifice and lay down his life for the well-being and the healing and repair of humanity. In fact, God's work, God's response, and God's the demonstration of his care for us was a motivation out of love. We can think of every passage that describes the love of God. He so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. God is love. And our response then, our push, we've got so many things that could motivate us. We could be motivated by fear. We could be motivated by hate. We could be motivated by anger. But God's challenging us. And the reason why we pray like we pray is so that we move God's people to be motivated out of love. Don't stop praying, but respond to our world in the power of and through the strength of love. Listen to this text. 1 John chapter 4, verse 20 and 21, out of the passage translation. Anyone can say, I love God. Yet hatred toward another, yet have hatred toward another believer or another person. This makes him a phony because if you don't love a brother or a sister whom you can see, how can you truly love God whom you can't see? For he's given us this command. Whoever loves God must also demonstrate love towards others. What's the greatest demonstration we can have? The greatest demonstration we can have in the face of an ugly world with a pandemic or with the virus of COVID or the virus of racism is the demonstration of love. We, we respond in at least three ways or to at least three things. Number one, in prayer, we're responding to hate. You and I are literally looking at the ugliness of hatred, how hatred is a cognitive manifestation of evil. It's an individual choosing to take their free moral agency and demean and lower the value of another person. Think about Philippians chapter 2 and verse number 3 where Paul teaches us that we ought to esteem others greater than ourselves. You cannot practice hate of another person and esteem them as better than yourself at the same time. So we respond to hatred through prayer, praying that God will move our hearts to respond to hate and practice love instead. We also respond to uh, or represent rather heaven itself. We show the world the standard of God by living out love to every individual that's here. And we pray for the power of God to move us in a way where we show a hurtful, hateful world just how awesome it is to walk in the character of God. But then number three, we recognize the need for healing and we pray on an ongoing basis that God heals, strengthens, delivers, and lifts up the broken places of our world. We don't know. We don't have 
full spectrum of every place where a person is hurt. We don't know how many individuals right now are harboring pain in their heart. We don't know what the loss of life is doing to the minds of our young people. We have no idea what quarantine is psychologically doing to the social fabric of our world. But we do know that in all of the hurt of the virus, in all of the hurt of loss from sickness, in all of the hurt of loss of life from racism, in all of the things that are happening right now with an unresponsive or irresponsive government, we know that God is the one who says that I want you to do this. Demonstrate love to others. And when you and I demonstrate love by choosing to love like God love, we are working to reverse the sickness and the, and the hatred within our culture. Make the choice to love. Choosing to love does a number of things. Choosing to love denies the culture's influence and the sin-sick, deplorable thinking of racism. Choose love because racism, even at a subconscious level, is demonic and evil at best. Choose love. Choose love and don't be colorblind. Don't, don't be reactionary and think that, that God doesn't see color or God didn't make color. That's a lie right from the enemy to try to create a homogeny and miss the beauty of what it means to be made in the image of God. No, choose love and choose to celebrate all of God's creation. Choose to celebrate those that are melanin proficient and glow in the sun and celebrate those that are melanin deficient knowing that God made everyone out of one blood and we ought to learn how to celebrate every color, every spectrum, every nation. There's only one race. So the concept of racism is a lie from the enemy's mouth. The reality is God loved the whole world, every individual that he made, and he wants to show that love by beauty being seen however God puts it on the stage. So choose to be loved. Don't be reactionary and hypersensitive to your context. Remember this. Remember that those individuals who are sick with the disease of racism, many of them, many of them are programmed and they don't even know that that is the case. The enculturation of American racism and its thinking leads to racist behavior and that racist behavior can only become, be overcome when God people through intentional and powerful prayer choose love and choose to respond to hate, choose to represent heaven and choose to represent our world's need for healing. Choose love. Thank God for the mission that we're on, the mission of making the strangers in the world who don't know him into our neighbors, bringing those neighbors close where they can find a place among the people of God to unpack their faulty thinking and become true friends. Choose love. And choosing love, God will bless us as we pray and affect change to reverse the curse of our culture, to bring healing and strength and support, to help those that are going through the strain and the anxiety and the frustration of the pandemic that's, that's wrecking the world by way of COVID and a new pandemic that's wrecking the world by way of racism. Choose love and let God be a demonstration through you. Don't stop praying. Pray for God to respond to the hate through our work. Pray for God to represent heaven through your efforts. Pray to God as we recognize the need for healing. Keep on praying and let God move in a way that shapes our entire world. Pray with me now. Father, we love you. We thank you and we bless you for being our God. We thank you for your love and your care for us. We thank you for the amazing way that you demonstrated. You have been the first demonstration and that demonstration to the sickness and the deplorable state of our world was for you to send Jesus. And we love you for that. We love you because you loved us first and you demonstrate perfect love through the work of King Jesus. God, we pray right now that you help us to represent you, that you help us to respond to the world and that you help us to recognize our need for healing that can only come from you. God, we pray that you bless your people to align themselves with a nonstop effort of praying for the, for the choice of love to be manifest in our lives. We pray, Father, that you missionally move us to help our thinking and our hearts and our anxiety to be subsided as we step in and fully embrace the beauty of what it means to live for you in this world. God, we pray that you reverse the push of the enemy. We pray that you allow our, allow our efforts to rise 
rise up in such a way where men and women and boys and girls will recognize that only through you, by the power of King Jesus, will the wrong that's been entrenched and programmatically fused into this world be righted and God's people can stand and know that you are the maker of the world. We are made beautifully. We are made brilliantly. You made us all. God, we love you. We thank you for how you are working right now. We pray continually for you to protect and heal and cover and strengthen those that need you. We pray that you bless them, Lord, to be built up in your power, that you insulate them as they go out and still deal with an unseen virus, that you protect those that are demonstrating as they make an effort to peacefully stand for what's right. God, cover them so that this pandemic does not rise again and create an even worse move. God, we ask for your blessings. We ask for your strength. We ask for your power, and we know that you're able. Help us, Lord God, in this season to trust you, to lean on you, to rely on you, and to know, Lord God, that we can only make it through because of you. We honor you, we praise you, and we magnify your name. Bless us, Father, because we are your children. In the name of Jesus, we together say amen. Listen, don't stop praying. Let God be demonstrated through your efforts to respond to hate through prayer, to represent heaven through your prayer and your effort, and to recognize our need for healing that can only come by the work of King Jesus. I'm going to pray for you, and I'm asking you, please, pray for me. And let's watch our God change everything around us. God bless you, and God keep you. Jesus said there's something that indeed he did like the Savior told the truth. He didn't hold the message back. He was teaching the truth in love. Telling it like it is. While holding pure motives and showing that he cared, he was teaching the truth in love. And now I'm by the truth of every obvious made no attempt to lie with all the foes against her. How she felt so all alone till Jesus asked the people who would throw the first stone. He was teaching the truth in love. Telling like it, like it is While holding pure motives And showing that he cared He was teaching the truth In love Truth in love.